this is Halloween, and I am back to hook you up with some more great costumes. Happy New Year! I hope you guys had an awesome Christmas and spent time with your families and all that jazz. Now it's time to start a new year, which may mean that you're going to a themed party. A lot of times, decades are the easiest parties to theme because everybody pretty much knows how to do the decades. Now for New Year's Eve, most popular is probably the 1920s, which I do have a video on. Uh, from a couple of years ago, I did a 1920s video. So if you're going to a 1920s party, you may wanna check that out. But today we will be recreating some great styles from fashion icons of the 1980s. Molly Ringwald, Annie Lennox, Madonna, Cindy Lauper, and we're going to be learning a little about these ladies too as we get ready. Let's get started. Annie Lennox is one of my top five favorite singers of all time. She was the lead singer of the Eurythmics in the 1980s and went on to have a solo career in the, in the 90s through early 2000s and still is performing today. But she was awesome and she was well known for this sort of androgynous style. Now she did say that she did not wear this style ever thinking that she was starting something. She did however wear this style because this was what was comfortable to her and she couldn't perform uncomfortable. So it kind of became her style and today we are recreating it. I have a white shirt, a black suit jacket, black fitted pants. I thought these black patent leather loafers would look good with it, um, being that they look business attire. And then some long black gloves. We are recreating a certain Annie Lennox. So this is the one we're recreating. And uh, I have a short red wig, the shortest I could find. She had more of a pixie cut, very, very, very short. We don't really make wigs like that, so we're just gonna go with this short red wig. Let's do our makeup. It's makeup time. It's been a couple months since I've uploaded any costumes at all. I needed the time off because doing costumes is awesome. I love it, but it takes a lot out of you. It's a lot of work and I hope y'all are enjoying the content. Um, I just needed a little bit of a break. This year I will probably be doing uploading my costumes on Fridays instead of Wednesdays. It just gives me more time to create the costume. So I do have this other job and I'm full time there so I have to kind of work it into my off time and there's not a whole lot of that. So <laughs> bear with me and look for me on Fridays the fourth week of each month through April, I'll be doing one costume a month, and then in May, I will start with a costume a week. So, we're starting a new year. I've got a lot of great ideas, and I hope you join me. That said, let's get started with our makeup. Annie Lennox, probably one of the most unique voices in the history of women in music. I just love her everything about her. I love her voice, I love her look, and she contributed so much to women's fashion and music, women in music, and just women in general. She's actually currently an activist for women's rights in other countries where they have been kept down and not able to accomplish as much. So it's, it's really cool. She actually had a great upbringing she was the daughter of a shipyard worker and a cook. Let me get started with my foundation. It's my regular old foundation. Cover girl, Olay. She's very fair complected, so I'm actually gonna powder over this to be as fair as possible. So I've got my foundation on, now I'm going in with my powder. Annie Lennox got an early start in music classically trained in jazz, playing the flute,
piano and harpsichord and attended the London Royal Academy of Music. She said that she didn't really like it there and she knew from the moment she walked in that it wasn't gonna work out, but she still completed three years with them and then went on to form the Eurythmics and later had a solo career. And I still think that Medusa is one of the best albums of all time. It's just awesome. If I had 10 albums to choose from that themed my life, it would Medusa would definitely be one of them. And that was her second solo album, I believe. She started with Diva. And Diva was a great solo album too, but that was her breakout solo album. It had Walking on Broken Glass, Why, a whole bunch of really great songs that I also loved, but Medusa was just so killer and unique. And it was a compilation of other people's hits, like Procol Harum, um, Neil Young, just a bunch of different people that she basically sang in her own style. And it gave whole new meaning to those songs. So if you don't have it or if you haven't heard it, check out Medusa, Annie Lennox, and you won't be disappointed. I promise you. <laughs> We're all fair complected now. We're gonna go in with our eyebrows. Now she had kind of darker eyebrows and I only have this one light, it's kind of a lighter brown pencil. I bought it because the lady at the store told me this has been around forever. And I thought, okay, cool, vintage makeup, but it's not real dark. So I might go in with some black as well because she had kind of dark eyebrows. It was kind of goth androgynous. It was really, but her eyebrows were kind of shaped like mine. So that's cool. <laughs> We'd definitely be doing some eyebrows that aren't shaped like mine. All right, I wanna go in with a little bit of black when I'm done to just kind of darken them up a bit. Now, Annie Lennox has said that she was most influenced by Joni Mitchell and Stevie Wonder. And the way she talks about Joni Mitchell, I think it's just so perfect. If you've not heard Joni Mitchell, I recommend diving in with her album, Blue. And Annie describes her music and her writing as a form of painting. Like, because she, with her words and music, she paints this image in your head. Just like if you're reading a book and the imagery that comes into your mind, that's how she writes her songs. You can really picture this beautiful scene with every song she writes and I couldn't agree more. I really love Joni Mitchell as well. I didn't realize that recently Joni Mitchell had suffered a stroke and is in a wheelchair now. She was another very influential woman in music and like Annie has always just been herself. She has more of a straight brow, sort of masculine. So I'm trying to create that. I do mine a little more rounded. Uh, that's the way I like it. And a little bit of black, just to darken. I'm gonna kinda blend that in with a Q-tip. Now we're getting started with our eyes. And I was just gonna go with this. There's a really dark brown color in this Urban Decay palette. Is it Urban Decay? Oh, it's a beauty palette. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna do a dark brown with a little bit of a uh, terracotta color as well. And uh, then some sort of pinkish blush. So for that, I'm just gonna I'm gonna start in at the corner here and work my way in. How many of you are going to an 80s themed New Year's Eve party? I know there has to be some of you out there. I'm telling you, themed parties are almost always decade parties. And um, it's just because it's so easy to do a decade. And like I said, the most popular is 1920s for New Year. It's just such a, a beautiful time in American history, but I bet the 80s is pretty popular too, just because it's uh, it's so fun. 
yeah, leave it in the comments below. If you're going to an 80s party, I want to know about it. And tell me what look you're thinking about doing. So I'm just going to go in like that. And we're going to also be going around the eye. So you see, we just went around just above, like in the crease. And then almost into an almond shape with the dark brown. We're going to go in with a terracotta sort of color and then right in the center we're gonna do a lighter color um, probably a beige kind of pat that in it's real pigmented this uh, this terracotta color it's really nice so I'm gonna do the same with the other side That's exactly what we're looking for. And then with the inner eye, we're gonna go with this sort of beige color. Now, she does do a black liner and a thick black line under the eye. So we're gonna line our eyes with black. Now under the eye, I'm gonna take this fine brush and I'm gonna go ahead and do like a, a dark charcoal black color right under the eye. You can clean it up with uh, a Q-tip for a better line. If you go just outside of your bottom lid, it's not gonna matter because you're gonna have mascara on, it's all gonna blend in, so I did. <laughs> I did go all the way to the inner eye with that, which typically is a no-no, but if you're Annie Lennox, it's okay. <laughs> That's how hers were. This the line went all the way across, so. I found it pretty interesting. She kind of compared her androgynous look, or trans androgynous, whatever you would want to call it, to that of David Bowie. They shared a similar appreciation, I guess, for the look of the opposite sex, so, they had a lot in common in that way. And I think even their music kind of, you know, is very, some of it can be kind of similar at times. So we've got our beautiful Annie Lennox eye, and we're just gonna go in with some mascara, get some pinky blush on and some red lipstick, and we'll be ready to get dressed. This is almost a Robert Palmer girl too. If you don't know, who Robert Palmer is, and you've never seen a Robert Palmer girl, look at the video, Simply Irresistible, by Robert Palmer. And for an 80s look, you can always go as a Robert Palmer girl as well, because that was a big song in the 80s. Just an idea. I'm gonna put this red lipstick on. Let's go get dressed. All dressed up and ready for photos. celebrity, probably the most notable fashion icon of the 80s. Her and, and Madonna, of course, really paved the way for this sort of bright, fun, even a little provocative look. And what we're going to be doing today is recreating the She's So Unusual album cover. In that, she's wearing a red bodice with a, a flowy red skirt, belts, a, a lot of jewelry, a lot of bracelets. So we have all of that going on and I just picked the most colorful stuff I could find. I've got some black fishnets and black fishnet gloves, fingerless gloves. And then I, I just got some colorful earrings that I found. Of course you have the iconic red orange fire wig that she had in that album cover. She had actually kicked off her red high heel shoes on the album cover and was just like dancing around with no shoes on. I think it was kind of like to say, 
look, I don't have to wear these. I'm going to be a rebel, you know. So she was more likely to wear a boot, uh, a flat boot, really. These have a heel on them. But either one would work for this look. And of course, she had a bouquet of flowers. Let's get started with our makeup. This one's going to be a fun one. Go for it. Cindy Lauper. This is going to be a really fun makeup because... Who doesn't love Cindy Lauper? Especially if you grew up in the 80s. She was just awesome. Everybody wanted to be like Cindy Lauper, you know, do the crazy hair and the, have the wild outfits and stuff like that. But very few people could pull it off, you know what I mean? So I'm just getting my foundation on. Cindy Lauper, if you look at her style in the 80s, it was mostly bodices or camisoles or something like that up top. And she wore some kind of a frilly brightly colored skirt on the bottom not a tutu a skirt so those of you out there thinking you know the 80s is all about leg warmers and tutus you're wrong these were almost a spanish style frilly skirts that she would wear a lot of colorful jewelry wild and crazy hair and makeup i see a lot of people they get stuck in a rut when they think of the 80s and everything tends to look the same they've got a big hair bow or the lace gloves or, you know, the leg warmers, tutus and all of that, bright colors and patterns. But I find that if you fixate on something and, and kind of portray that as opposed to something specific, you know what I mean? As opposed to just bright colors and patterns and stuff like that, you just blend in, you know what I mean? But if you actually pick somebody, then they're gonna be like, oh my God, Cindy Lauper, yeah, I remember that outfit or, um, you know, anything like, like I was saying, the Robert Palmer girls were really distinctive for men, Miami Vice. You know, if you do a specific character or a specific look, it's going to make you stand out that much more. And this look, Cindy Lauper, is going to be awesome. For this, you're going to need some tape. I'm going to use this to, for precision lining of my makeup. Uh, I've got three palettes here. This is the Kat Von D. Uh, Alchemist holographic palette now you don't have to use this one basically we're gonna do a white iridescent base on our eyes on our eyelids you know up top basically before we go in with the colors because it was all about the colors so I've got my Tamix Revolution palette here with all these great colors in it just for good measure we may not be using this but I have my Effiano neon palette. I might use some of the stars. There is some star glitter in here and I might use some of the stars, probably the blue. And I think I'm going to be doing eyelashes for this one. You're going to need a bright pinky blush. And I got these two from NYX or NYX, whatever you call it. I don't know. Um, I just got these from the drugstore today. It's a, it's a nice pink color with a pink glitter to go on top this is just a me thing i like to wear powder i don't know i feel like it kind of seals my makeup on i don't really like to be shiny i know a lot of people like to be shiny out there and i'm shiny enough gonna do some eyebrows cindy lopper's eyebrows were kind of rounded and i'm gonna try and create that with my mine are kind of rounded too it just depends on how i draw them Obviously, there's hair there. I don't just draw my eyebrows on, but they're just real thin. I made the mistake of shaving them when I was younger. They never quite grew back right. <laughs> I did. I shaved like on top and on bottom because I wanted to look like Christina Ricci. Yeah, hers were kind of straight, so I tried to make mine straight, and then they never really grew back the right way. So, <laughs> my fault. Now, with Cindy Lauper, she kind of goes way down, almost like a 1920s brow. It's very thin and it goes pretty far down the tail just like that i'm gonna do the other one the same way there we go we've got the cindy lopper brow now we're gonna go in with a brush here i'm gonna go with the probably the whitest one well there's one in here that's a let's do the pink there's a pink opal a violet amethyst a blue sapphire and a green emerald now these are really pretty colors i don't wear these a lot i thought i would I don't tend to wear them very much, so we're just gonna go just under our eyebrow on our brow bone to give it a nice little shimmer. She's all about the shimmer, for sure. Just using kind of a wide brush because I'm doing a pretty wide coverage there. 
And that's what I want to do to both sides. It does not show up a lot, but it might in pictures. It just, it's just there to, because we're going all the way up to the brow with the makeup, giving us a canvas to start with. We're going to go in. First, we want to tape. So you're going to grab some tape. My cats have been around it, so there's cat hair stuck to it. You got cats, you got cat hair everywhere. I'm just gonna put some tape right about here on both sides because I want a nice, precise line. And you'll see why. There weren't a lot of images of Cindy Lauper online where I could really see the makeup job. But I did find this one picture where I could see the makeup more. It's somebody who did the makeup and I could see at least what it looked like. That's about right on both sides. Feels a little weird, but that's okay. So next we're gonna go in with our blue color. I kinda wanna do this blue here cause it has a bit of a shimmer to it. She's all about the shimmer. It's not quite as dark once you put it on your skin as it is in the palette, I don't think. So let's give it a go. So this way you can go like all the way over and not have to worry about straightening up your lines later. <laughs> I think I'm gonna put this brighter blue like on my lid once this is in the crease. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Cindy Lauper was raised by a single mother in Queens, New York with her two siblings and always kind of struggled in school. Didn't really do very well in school. I think maybe even ended up dropping out. I can't remember. She had a hard time anyway, and she found solace in music. And she started very young playing in cover bands around New York. During this time, obviously, she was a starving artist. She had suffered through bouts of homelessness, depression, even times where she went hungry because she didn't have a whole lot of money and she's living this kind of hardcore cover band lifestyle. Um, she kind of struggled there for a little bit. And then she got with a keyboardist and started writing her own music. And that's how eventually, eventually she was found because she started doing her own thing, writing her own music. Someone out there found very unique and awesome and signed her. Now, what I thought was interesting is as a young girl, she had a best friend who was a guy and he was gay. He ended up contracting the AIDS virus in a later interview. She says that the song True Colors was written about her friend that had died of AIDS during that time. It absolutely shattered her. But then later on, come out with the LGB flag, the rainbow flag. She stated that the guy that actually created that flag came up to her and, it, and told her that it was because of her song True Colors that he had come up with that idea for that flag. So that was, I had no idea she had any part of that. It's just kind of cool because it's history. You know, it's the way something got started and it was all because of that song and her friend that passed away. I love Cindy Lauper because she's always been unapologetically her and she's never felt the need to change that to stay relevant. If you don't like it, you know where you can go. To me, that that's what makes her really special because she's never changed really. A lot of other people, Madonna, Cher, they've gone through you know, different phases where they've changed somehow or changed their style or changed who they are and trying to keep up with the, with the time. She was just like, this is me. This is who I always will be. Same with Annie Lennox, the same thing. Two women that are very strong women and they're okay with being themselves and they know that that's enough. A lot of you are like that out there too. You gotta know that that's enough, that it's enough to be you and you don't have to please anybody. I'm gonna, Take this tape off here and make a new tape. I just moved the tapes to just below here. We're gonna create like a little yellow part right here. <clears throat> but I forgot to do my lid. So I'm gonna go in with this lighter blue. It's kind of like an aqua. And just do my lid really quick so we have a little bit of contrast there. These shadows are pretty pigmented for cheap shadows. Um, this came from Target. They still sell these. I bought this like probably two years ago because I wanted to have a brightly colored palette. I didn't have one and Kat Von D had made one, but evidently it's hard to get your hands on it. It was inspired by stained glass in churches. And you probably, if some of you are makeup enthusiasts out there, you probably know what I'm talking about. But if you could even get your hands on it now, it's really expensive because 
now it's discontinued and it's rare. We can always clean up if we've dropped a little under our eyes. I'm not too good at doing the tap thing. <laughs> you know, sometimes I just want to go and I get the, the shadow all in, on my under eye. So what I'm going to do now is I'm switching to a yellow from the palette here. And I'm going to get a finer brush for that because I want to make that precision upper line and I don't want to put the tape up there because I've got the blue and I don't want that coming off so I'm thinking ah uh, this is the only yellow in here so I'm gonna go with that one it's a nice bright yellow so hopefully that's what it looks like when it's on yeah I think it's pretty good let me reduce this lighting a little bit maybe you could see it better <laughs> I'm gonna use this same brush. It's kind of like, you know, just thinner, smaller, more precision. And I'm gonna go in under my eye and all the way under the yellow part with red. And I'm thinking I may use a blue eyeliner. I'm kind of feeling it should be blue. So this brightest red in here, it's literally like a fire engine red. And we're going right under My eye is a little red from the tape, so watch out for that. By the time you go to your party, the red, the redness from the tape will disappear. I'm certain of that. <laughs> Cindy Lapa. Now we just need some blush and lipstick. And I'm gonna add some stars. Right now, with this palette here, I'm just gonna stick my finger in there, grab up some stars, and just kind of put them right above where the makeup is kind of right up on my forehead the sides of my head here going up i decided against the lashes for her i was having a problem with them anyway i'm just like ugh. i have to do them for madonna so i'll just put them on when i do madonna because <laughs> i can tell i'm not i'm not really sure that she wore lashes to be honest with you i put them on and i was like this doesn't look right you know she she wanted to more she was more focused on like the makeup the eyeshadow the blush the little stickers and stuff she'd wear and the jewelry i'm not sure that eyelashes i don't think they were as big of a thing in the 80s as they are now definitely not i don't think i don't remember that i was born in the 80s 81 so i did a lot of my growing up in the 80s and i don't remember eyelashes being a big deal back then at all. So I'm putting on my pinky blush now. Oh, another thing is Cindy Lauper actually, she had a Broadway musical, which I didn't know about. She actually was very active in Broadway for some time. And she had a production called Kinky Boots that was inspired by a drag queen named Lola, who designed Kinky Boots for drag queens. I didn't even know about that. And she's most recently real active in politics. She speaks up for our gay marriage and things like that. She's a, she's kind of an activist when it comes to the LGBT community, standing up for them. Probably has a lot to do with her friend that passed away and just speaking on his behalf. I didn't really know she was involved in politics. You know, I don't see her. She's kind of like under the radar a little bit, fighting. I'm gonna put a little red in my brow. That's it, yeah, it needed some red. Now, I'm gonna try out this lipstick. This is NYX or NYX Cosmetics. This is a Smooth Whip Matte Cream. Okay, I thought it looked kind of Cindy color. I don't have a lot of pink lipsticks. I have a I have red. I even bought another red just now. I can't get enough red, but ooh, yeah. That's nice. And it's kind of, it is a whip. It has a whipped feeling to it. It's pretty nice, I like it. I might go back and get a red one of these. Man, I'm really impressed with that. It feels really good on my lips. It's a nice color too. Well, I'm not really a pink person. I mean, that looks real nice. And then I'm gonna put this real pretty pink sparkle on top. All done with our makeup. Let's go get dressed and take some photos. 
all dressed up and ready for photos. Do I look like Cindy Lauper? Lord knows I'm trying. Molly Ringwald, she had sort of an androgynous Victorian style. A lot of pastels, a lot of pink, pretty in pink. But she would also do the suit jacket, hat thing. I have a hat here that I just, I had a scarf and I just tied the scarf around the hat. I bought this ugly, it's a real ugly little outfit. But I think it'll work for Molly Ringwald. Um, she was into really a lot of floral patterns. And there's this picture of her where she's wearing this floral vest and she has a hat like this with the scarf tied around it. So I bought this and it's a set. So I'll be doing two Molly Ringwald looks, but it's a, it's a top and a skirt. So I'm gonna make this top into a vest. Very easy to make this into a vest. It buttons down the front, so we don't need to do anything there. I'm just going to cut it into the shape of a vest and I'll be using my hot glue gun instead of needle and thread to just sort of hem it in. I don't have the time today so I'm just gonna make this into a vest. Very easy to do with already having the buttons down the front and then this will be another outfit. The pink top with the floral skirt and of course I've got some uh, lace pantyhose. These are just a flesh tone lace pantyhose that I'm gonna wear I just got a suit jacket, which for the suit jacket, you don't want anything real fitted for Molly Ringwald. It's more of a boxy, almost a men's jacket is what you're looking for with Molly Ringwald. This one had some fancy buttons, so I went ahead and bought it. And I have these more snug pants that I bought to do Annie Lennox. So I've got a white, the white shirt that I used for Annie Lennox fluffing in the dryer, and I'm gonna use that as the top underneath. And then I have a Victorian style cameo brooch here, which is also very Molly Ringwald. And we'll go ahead and get started with our makeup. Go. Molly Ringwald, the it girl of the 80s. Very simple makeup, really a very simple look and comfortable also. She would be a very comfortable person to portray from the 80s. So I'm just gonna get my foundation going. Now that my foundation is on and my powder has set my foundation, I'm gonna just do my eyebrows real quick. Pretty normal. Molly Ringwald was the daughter of a chef and her father was a blind German musician, primarily a pianist. And Molly Ringwald started her career at age five, singing in her dad's jazz band. She actually sang a lot when she was younger because she recorded on two different Disney Christmas uh, Christmas albums. The whole getting into film and acting just kind of flowed right in. She auditioned and was given a part in The Facts of Life and later on, it was actually the summer after her ninth grade year, John Hughes recognized her and her breakout role, 16 Candles, debuted in theaters. Now if you're a man and you're wanting to get inspiration for how to dress 80s, maybe you were, you know, you're a millennial or something, you just don't know what you can wear. Any of those John Hughes films would be great, or even like Say Anything, um, 16 Candles, Pretty in Pink, any of those 80s films, classic 80s films, you can watch and get inspiration from. My husband and I actually went as the couple in the AHA video after they were drawn in black and white. We went like that and it, everybody loved it. Like, and they knew who we were. We went into this one bar and the band, the live band started playing Take On Me. <laughs> we had to dance to it. That was pretty awesome, but I mean, but that would be a really cool idea, something you can do. Another cool thing that I learned about Molly Ringwald is she actually turned down lead roles in Ghost and in Pretty Woman. I'm wondering what lead roles she turned down but at this point in her career, it was shifting. She was done with the whole 80s it girl thing. She made her last 80s film and then kind of went on to TV and even Broadway. 
So she did some Broadway and stuff like that. Her last role that I can remember is when she played the mother in the Dahmer series, which was sickening if you ever seen it. It's not for the weak. I mean, that series was crazy. Just that guy was so evil. If you hadn't seen it, if you're into like true crime and stuff, you'd probably like it. Viewer discretion is definitely advised on that one. She's still very active in acting. She's just kind of stepped back from the more lead roles in, in big films. She's doing smaller, smaller gigs, I guess you can say. TV and Broadway and stuff like that. I'm sure you still get paid a bunch for that. So go her and you can be out of the like limelight. I don't know if that would be the life for me. So I'm just gonna use a color out of this palette. I'm not really sure what I'm going with yet. Just something kind of brownish. She didn't wear a, a ton of makeup, just really kind of light, almost natural looking. So I'm just gonna do right on my lid and just a little bit around. Like I'm gonna do this brown color and maybe just a little bit of dark brown, like right, right over here in the corner. I'm just gonna pat that on. I don't really want it going up or forming an almond or anything like that. Just kind of just so it's there. Remember that line in Full House? The secret to wearing makeup is to make it look like you're not wearing any. And that was Molly Ringwald. It's just enough, but it's not over the top. If you're from the 80s and you remember Debbie Gibson, Debbie Gibson and Molly Ringwald have very similar style. Debbie Gibson probably was a Molly Ringwald fan. <laughs> I think I had the cassette single of Lost in Your Eyes at one point now. <laughs> if you're from the 80s, 90s, you remember them single cassette tapes? Yeah, it had an A side and a B side, and that's all you got, but they were like $1.99. So uh, that's a blast from the past, but those were fun. You didn't have to buy the whole tape. You just bought the song you liked, because they were all the, the radio edits, the popular songs that were on the radio. It was either that, or you get the blank cassette tapes and you wait for it to come on the radio, and then you press record and play at the same time. <laughs> so you can record it off the radio. That was how you, you got it another way. <laughs> if you just wanted the one song. I held on to my cassette singles for quite some time. Now I'm just going under my eye here. It's kind of like a bit of a smoky eye, but not really. It's just right around the eyes to give it a little bit of drama without too much drama. And then a, a darker brown, just right in the corner here. You can also draw inspiration for the 80s watching Stranger Things, because that was kind of set back in the 80s. So Stranger Things, E.T., those were all movies from the 80s that you can watch and get inspiration. Perfect. That's it for her. I'm just going to put some, uh, I got to put mascara on, of course, but I'm going to put like a pinkish blush on there. I'm losing daylight so fast. I don't have time to get these videos out when I want them to be out because by the time I get off work or I finish a costume, even after the day, there's no light outside anymore. It's wild, you know, kind of blows. I'm trying to get this out as fast as possible, but it's looking like it's going to be Saturday before it gets to you. But this is good for any 80s party you're going to. Now, they don't, I'm, I haven't heard of a lot of 80s New Year's parties. It's possible that there are some, but these are like, most of the time it's birthday parties and stuff throughout the year where they get into the 80s theme and because it's just a fun theme to do especially like girls parties and stuff like that. They love the 80s. I'm gonna put on some mascara, then I'm gonna go get dressed. Oh, I gotta put on a little lipstick. I'll probably just use this mauve lipstick that I have. It's gotta be like a mauve or a pink for her. Very natural. I've got this natural lipstick here. Let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, something like that. Let's go get dressed. All dressed up and ready for photos.
This is Madonna. We're going with a desperately seeking Susan look. She was wearing a lace top. She had some leggings on. Uh, this skirt is almost exactly the skirt she was wearing in Desperately Seeking Susan. Lace gloves, a bra, a black bra. This is what I'm gonna tie around my head. She had kind of like a hair bow tied around her head. This is a piece of material I already had. I'm gonna use for that. And then of course, a lot of jewelry primarily bracelets for her. I've got the boots that are almost exactly what she was wearing in the movie. I actually got those from a thrift store and they were not even worn that much. They're almost brand new. I always love when I find something at the thrift store that I actually like because <laughs> then I'm not just using it for a costume. It's actually something I'll wear. Then it's not a waste of money, which is awesome. And here's the wig. I got this wig off Amazon. And I literally typed in Madonna wig. Let's get started with our makeup. It is cold in my house today. I've got my hair down. I'm wearing my hoodie. Man, we are going to get started with our Madonna makeup. It's pretty basic if you know all of the major contributions of the Madonna makeup. So the red lipstick, the mole, you know, smoky, smoky eyes. It's Madonna. So let's go ahead and, and do this thing. I've already put on my foundation and my powder and I'm just gonna go right in. She did have the bushy brows and they were really dark. So I'm going in with a black pencil on my eyebrows and just do a, a Madonna brow. I did do Madonna, not this past year, but the year before I did the Like a Virgin video. If you want to check that out, it is in my playlist, Celebrities. That's the brow. So I'm going to do the other off camera and then we'll start with our eyes. I'm going to be doing a dark brown on my eye with just a lighter brown on the lid. Like we've done a lot of our makeup actually in this uh, video. Just going into the crease and working my way out to an almond shape. Madonna was born in Bay City, Michigan. I knew she was from Michigan, but I couldn't remember what part of Michigan. But she was born in Bay City, Michigan. And her mother, her, her mother's real name was Madonna. And Madonna is Madonna's real name. I didn't know that either. I could have sworn she had a different name. But Sissoni, I think, is the last name, and that's Italian, I believe. Madonna really needs no introduction. I mean, it's out there. <laughs> Anything you need to know about Madonna is pretty much out there. And most people already know. It's Madonna. I was obsessed with her when I was growing up. Like, I wanted to be Madonna. You know, you get those papers in school. What do you want to be when you grow up? I would always put Madonna. <laughs> that's who I wanted to be when I grew up. I would cut my mom's pantyhose to make fingerless gloves. She would get really mad <laughs> when I did that. You know, we didn't have a whole lot of money when I was growing up. I mean, we were probably moderate, you know, middle class. And so cutting up a pair of pantyhose that probably cost quite a bit back then, she wasn't very happy. <laughs> but at the same time, she laughed about it. <laughs> Because, I mean, it was smart. <laughs> I needed a pair of fingerless gloves, and I made my own. All right, I'm going to go right underneath. Just about halfway. And I just want to diffuse this a little bit. Blend. I use my finger, too. And we're just going to do the same thing to the other side. Now that I've done my brown, I want to go on my lid with a lighter color to just wake that up. I wish I had a little concealer. I don't have any concealer. I need to buy some. I ran out like forever ago and never bought any more. <laughs> you definitely, a concealer would be good. You really want to highlight the lid. That's the Madonna look. I have this really light color and it's, it's working pretty good. And then we're going to, we need a black pencil line our lower lid. Wait till I have the hair on. Then maybe you can see it. 
I'm not gonna do lashes. I was gonna do lashes, but I'm over lashes. I need a new glue. It's just, you know, it's not necessary. Like I said, the lashes thing, I don't think they were doing a whole lot of that in the 80s. I don't really like the way it looks now. My mom had would wear fake eyelashes. I didn't really like the way it looked on her either. Like, God gave me lashes. I already have some. I don't need extra. Like I get if you want to highlight, but most of the time they do them real thick. Looks really weird. <laughs> it looks too weird for me. <laughs> That's the Madonna eye pretty much. I think I'm gonna do, I did a cat eye. <laughs> I looked at a picture and it looked like she had one. She had a cat eye, so a picture from Desperately Seeking Susan. And she definitely had one. So I thought I remembered differently, but I'm not always right, you know? I'll admit that. We've got our Madonna makeup. Only thing missing is the red lip. I bought this. I went on a NYX or NYX Mission the other day and I just bought a bunch of their stuff. I haven't yet tried this one. This is a red stay on lip color. Ooh, okay. I have to say I'm kind of liking their products. I never usually bought that brand. I'm a Maybelline girl. But what I like about it, it's got the stuff you put on top for the shine and also for moisture. Because a lot of stay on lip colors get real dry and start to crumble and I don't like that. Even the Gwen Stefani one I had, the pigment and the smell was awesome, but just like any other color stay lip pigment, it starts to dry up and crumble. <laughs> I think this keeps it from doing that. So yeah, I recommend. And what I love about it too, I could leave it in the car in the heat and I don't have to worry about it melting or <laughs> I can leave it in my pocket of my clothes, wash and tumble dry, and I don't have to worry about it getting all over my clothes. So that's the cool thing about these. And this lip, this smooth pink whip that they have is really good too. I really like it a lot. That's the Madonna look. Let's get dressed. for joining me again today. I hope you loved today's episode. There's going to be many more coming up in 2024. I hope you have an awesome new year. Be safe. Don't drive drunk. Me and my husband, we actually, for the last couple years, been going to a place that's in walking distance and they do a free champagne toast and all of that. So it's an Irish pub. They have live music. So if you have a place close by like that, just walk. And what's great about it too is if it's crowded and there's not a lot of parking, you don't have to worry about parking your car, right? So I hope I've inspired you for your next 80s party. Remember, it's not all about leg warmers and geometric patterns. You know, of course, that's part of it, but there's a lot more to it than that. If you're a man, look to the Culture Club for inspiration or Devo or all the musicians back then, Depeche Mode had their own style. So there's a lot of inspiration out there and you can get real creative with the 80s. That does it for today's episode. Happy New Year. I'll see you next year.